Okay, that's all I want. Okay, maybe I've got some audio. Audio, yes. Good. G'day, Lorm. Okay. Place for the keyboard. Yeah, Lum, you were last last night, and you're first tonight. Sound, yeah, sound went a bit dead. Should be good now, though. notice I have put the uh, chat window into part of the output. This could be an interesting variation. I don't know if it will work or not, but we'll see how we go. Who knows, it might stop people writing complete trash. And then again, probably not. Okay. Yeah, the audio, I don't know why, I rebooted and for some reason the device that I normally use didn't come back up so I had to you know, redo it. It's a bit annoying. <laughs> Which way do you go? Where's your front? You're the front, which means you go there. Each of these little knuck units, they can be a bit of a pain in the butt to work on with the SATA drive. Okay, Philip and Douglas. Uh, we don't have anything too dramatically exciting today. I am just finalising this uh, little knuck which ended up being a colossal pain in the butt because I for some reason thought this was a Windows um, 7 machine that I was migrating from but I was wrong it was actually Windows XP so for, to get it to work I had to basically install Windows 7 migrate all the user stuff to Windows 7 and I haven't got all the applications up yet and uh, and then finally get it installed on the NUC itself, which is always fun. Right, right, that's good. Hey, Mike, uh, I missed Lewis' stream this morning. I haven't even had a chance to watch it yet. I've been meaning to all day, and it just hasn't happened too many things going on. Funnily enough, there wasn't really a lot of work going on, but I just seemed to... Uh, oh, of course, I was working on this. Funny how the brain tricks you. Uh, okay. There we go. That's a nice, um, nice change from the compact satellite box that it was in originally. Make sure that I get all the dust off it. Hopefully the person will be happy with it. They're going from a Core 2 Duo, uh, 3 gigahertz or something like that, and this is a Celeron 3050, which runs at about 1.6 gigahertz. So it is a fair bit of a performance drop, but the upside is this is a solid state drive. So I'm hoping the performance of the solid state drive will more than make up for the relative drop in CPU performance. Right. Hey, Krajo. Wow, well, I'm sorry, mate. You just have to uh, have a extra long coffee break or something, maybe. Mm -hmm. 
Let's make sure this thing boots up properly. Uh, where did my... Oh, and I got my new keyboards today, so I'm trying this new Logitech and it's got a slightly more compact mouse. I'm not a great fan of these compact mice. They're only about 10%, maybe 15% smaller, but they seem to get lost in my hand. On the upside though, the mouse action, the uh, wheel action is very nice, so we'll give it a shot. Uh, trash can, <coughs> shuffle trash can. The power supply on that thing ended up being really dud. Uh, even though I thought it was working a bit better after I cleaned it up, when I went to use it today, when I was trying to do the mod uh, migration from XP to Windows 7, it completely failed on me. Uh, it wasn't a big problem because I just took one of these things. These are little uh, SFX power supplies, and they managed to pick three. 100, 400 watts into these things, I think. Well, it says 400. I'd probably rate it at 200 realistically. But I use these in my mini ITX data recovery workstations. You may have seen in one of the earlier videos the little um, compact devices, and I've got a front load tray on it for the 3.5 inch drive bay. So they're cheap, they're compact, um, they work pretty good, and yeah, they're good for. Just little old machines, small old machines too, so worth keeping them around. Uh, what am I after? Ah, keyboard. I've already labelled my new arrivals, sort of fresh new bright white labels. It's a shame that. Intel chose to not have any level of USB 2 support on these things. G'day Jabara. Uh, Paul, which game are you talking about? Sorry, I'm in the wrong country, am I? Uh, anyway, this this is all working good. I'll just get my lamp out of the way. Yeah, you can see that's the NUC there, running Windows 7. So that's all good. It boots fairly quickly as well. Before restarting, yeah, restart now. Oh, the cricket. Uh, yeah, Paul, I do like my cricket, but unfortunately, because we don't get it free to air here anymore, I know, I know, I'm a bit of a cheapskate, but because we don't get it free to air anymore, I really haven't had a chance to watch it in quite a few years now. And even if it was, I must confess, um, I have long since torn down the antenna for this house, and we just watch everything through Netflix or YouTube now. So we don't do any broadcast stuff here. Got a nice 55 inch um, high definition TV, just normal high def, not 4K. And yeah, it's just YouTube or Netflix. I don't really miss the adverts, that's for sure. <laughs> Although YouTube's now got them for me. Uh, India versus Bangladesh. Ah, oh man, these things keep tearing the wrong way. That's annoying. Solar fume extractor out of one of those old power supplies. Handy parts. Um, what do you mean by solar? Like, how did that tie in? Do you want to explain that for me? I mean, in a genuine sense. So. Damn it. Paul, do you know if that's been broadcast uh, anywhere, live stream on YouTube or anything like that? I just noticed something about your account here. Great, even with completely different mouse and everything, I still grab the wrong ones. 
Yeah, you can drop a link if you find one. Yeah. Let's see if I can get one of these torn off. Hey, Mac Vision. Aha, uh -huh, got one. I found out today that I can purchase those um, multimeters that Lewis Rossman is currently using. <coughs> Pardon me. I can purchase them here in Australia. Uh, one of my suppliers has them. And uh, I was fortunately linked to it by someone I know, or someone who knows me. Uh, they're about 70 Australian dollars, which isn't too bad. And I might pick one up when I pick up a bunch of other stuff from that supplier. They specialize in audio equipment as well. So I was thinking of getting some half decent microphones and whatnot. So you guys would get to hear my voice in all its uh, somewhat glory without being uh, destroyed by this current microphone setup. Uh. Oh, yeah, sorry, Douglas. Thanks for that. <laughs> G'day, John. Seems like everybody's jumping on today. So, uh, Paul, I gotta say, when it comes to cricket, probably the last matches or team groups that I really, really watched were uh, back in the days when Alan Border was still Australian in the Australian team. That was a long time ago now. I started watching when the Chapel brothers were in there, and I remember the dreaded underarm um, underarm bowling just so they could try and win that match. <sighs> that was a bit of a low blow, that one. Uh, this iPhone 5, by the way, it's just one that's been sitting in a drawer for the better part of a year or so, I've been told. And it has a very special home button. And naturally it's out of focus, because I've got fixed focus on. It's a key from something, it just says enter. So that's really, um, yeah, been a bit interesting. I don't even know how it worked, because the dome is missing off there. So, beats me. GTV on YouTube has it. Okay. Evening six skills. John, I still haven't got a um, chance to get around to pick up one of those high temperature vices. I do need to get one. It's just a case I've been busy with everything else. Well, that that's not really an excuse. It's going to take me all of what ten minutes to order one. I've just got to do it. By the way, Paul, slightly disappointing news. Uh, it will not be until next month that I'll be able to order that microscope. And unfortunately, YouTube has decided not to migrate. Well, anything uh, contributed in the month of June does not go across until the middle of July. And unfortunately, it all happened on the 1st and 2nd of June. So, just a bit of patience I'm, we'll have to go with. Well, this looks okay. There's no water damage. It's a bit dusty, a bit grimy, obviously, because we've got cracks and whatnot going on there. Uh, the battery, there's some very slight pitting on the plastic outer cover but it doesn't look like anything has gotten through the uh, outer membrane layer, so that's okay. And kind of feels like it's never been worked on before, which is a nice change. So we'll get to it. We're just doing a screen change on this. Kerry Parker crap. Oh, man. That's creative, but it has to be the way... <laughs> Yeah, John, I agree. I will love it. I already know I will, because that uh, the other piece of junk that I keep using is just driving me insane. I think I'm better off with two pieces of Captain tape on the wood to hold down my stuff. Yeah. The other thing that I just organised tonight, um, I'm looking at replacement benches that I have spoken to you all about before, uh, to replace these wooden things. And... I was speaking to one of my clients who does kitchen installations and things like that 
and they offered to me to make up a pair of benches and they did it at a price that I couldn't say no to so rather than spending around about 300 Australian dollars to do it I get it for 150 and the 150 was actually more than what they offered to do it for I felt guilty taking it for the price they were going to offer it to me because they have done good things for me in the past so I said no I said I want you to push it up to 150 and uh, that was with delivery as well uh, okay this phone probably actually has been open before now that I'm into it because this screw is rounded out so 150 bucks is a pretty good deal for the two desktops, bench tops, they will be laminated, white laminate. So, if you ever seen Jason Vilmer's um, videos, you'll notice he's got a nice white bench top. Mine will hopefully be something similar to that. So, while my bench tops will be quite good, I don't think my content will be quite up to the quality of his just yet. Uh, have you ever? want to get into iPhone repairs and you're looking for as much diversity as possible uh, it's well worth checking out STS Telecom it's in one of my links down below and he produces a good number of videos and some excellent content uh, alright it's funny I don't even really consciously know what I'm doing here at the moment. I'm just letting my hands go through the motions of disassembling this phone. I quite like the 5C. I know a lot of people don't, but I think it's a fun little phone. It doesn't give me any sense of nerves or anything like that. It's just something I can undo on whim. Oh, let's see. Uh, g'day Spencer. Will cost more in July. Uh, let's see. That went off the screen. Cost more in July with the extra tax the government wants if we import him. Oh, yeah, the Harvey Norman thing. I mean, look, I can understand, um, there's, it's a bit of, you know, I've sat on both sides of that fence, and, but I would say realistically, Harvey Norman's just blowing things a little out of proportion, I mean, yeah, there's a 10% GST that they have to fight against, um, this is an original screen though, so what's going on? That's weird. Like I said, the, the screw for this was chewed out. But this is an original screen. So I'm not sure what the story is behind this. I can't imagine it being chewed out in factory. It might have, but uh. Anyway, back to the Harvey Norman thing. Uh, yeah, they, they want to go on about that whole 10% difference thing being an unfair advantage. And to a degree, you know, 10% is a notable amount of money. But realistically, it is not the majority of the reason why we have such a price difference here in Australia. The biggest reason for our price difference, of course, is our wages. Um, there's just no way to pay the people everything that everyone wants in Australia without really jacking the prices up. You just can't do it. Uh, but of course, the GSD thing is a convenient sort of... Uh, convenient thing to yell about and I'd say his main goal here is not so much to reclaim the 10% but rather just to make it enough of an inconvenience for people to order larger things abroad um, because then when you've got to go through all the paperwork and believe me it's a pain in the butt doing import GD's paperwork here in Australia um, yeah but just make it annoying enough that then people sort of go ah heck it's not worth the extra money we save to bring it in from overseas let's just go down to Harvey Norman and buy it directly and you know swallow the loss so I'd say that's what his strategy is certainly would be mine if I was in that position 
but it's convenient to crow about or complain about something else while your real mission stays hidden. Okay, I need a new home button here too. Oh, chat didn't follow. John says, I like the iPhone 5C too. It seems to be seeing more and more of them. There, uh, Paul, the PayPal information is if you, it's the first link on my descriptions below, or if you go to my main website, which is the second link, you'll see it there. And you can email me if you like. I understand if you don't want to. I do understand the reasons why. Or at least I think I do. But um, yeah, the, that's the way you can get a hold of me that way. Uh, yeah, with the iPhone 5C, I think they're coming out a little more because they're a bit more durable, particularly with kids at school. And I think parents are kind of getting sick of having to replace parts so often and the 5C just seems to stand up a little bit better. I did have a problem for a while with the 5C screens due to the flexibility of the polymer case, the plastic case I should rather say. Oh man this one's cracked right through. So what was I saying about the durability of this case? Yeah, This must have taken a hell of a hit to do that. Um, due to the flexibility of the case what would sometimes happen is the screen cable flex would take the um, would take the strain instead and when that happened it would break the screen internally and of course I would get people bringing these things back to me a week or two later and saying hey it's just gone black um, you know we dropped it and it just went all black and it took me a while to work out what was going on because I thought it might have been perhaps you know how they will go into that lock up state where you gotta press the lock button in the home to bring it out the hard reset but uh, it wasn't that it was the flex where is it yeah this flex here on the screen it would take a um, it would take a strain sideways and that would cause the connections inside here to break loose just enough and it caused you to have a dead screen without any damage being showing on the outside so yeah, a few people weren't happy about that but that was about the only weakness I found on the 5C as a general rule. And maybe it was just a particular batch of screens because I haven't experienced it a lot lately. But the 5C is a fairly consistent replacement unit around here and I do like that I only need one, s one screen for it since it's all black. Alright. Yeah, that's looking cleaned up now. What do I need? I need to get a home button. <sighs> buy an IPTV box and get a lot of free TV then you got to find the time to watch the IPTV <laughs> uh, now no more under input at a 20 oh yeah handy pass it's going to be brutal at $20 the, the main problem with the dropping below a thousand is that I don't think customs are going to be able to handle the workload because that was the original reason why it went up to a thousand is because at the time customs took on their new IT system and it was a bit of a disaster they didn't have the time and all the import paperwork was piling up they couldn't clear the jobs quick enough so pardon me um, in terms of cost effectiveness it was just as cheap and better off overall to raise, uh, raise that level up to a thousand dollars and let things through but I would say now it probably be sensible perhaps if they dropped it to 500 I could understand that uh, you probably find that's about where the threshold is between practical return of investment or time expenses versus inconveniencing people if you have an Android box you can add Kodi to it and there's a lot of place on tube guys so Gamers five from the UK. Well, I don't know what they got around here. 
they weren't happy about that. I told them to stop dropping. Yeah, yeah that never goes down well. <laughs> but believe me, I want to tell them a lot of that. Like I get the, we've all had it, I'm sure. Uh, you get the case where you fit a brand new screen on, and the next day they've dropped it, and they come at you as if it's your fault that they're having to pay again for a new screen that one day after they just coughed up 150 bucks or whatever. And I can empathize with them, but at the same time, it's like, well, not my fault you dropped it. So, yeah. Uh, what did I do? Put Teflon on the back of your phone? Spray it with Teflon? I don't think so. Watch Michael Oberdeck do a live refurb of phones he had issues with on the iPhone 6 screen. Okay. So, hey Chris, you enjoying your over 1000 club fame now, Chris? I hope. Nothing exciting here, Chris. Just doing a screen on an iPhone 5C, and I'm just off to get a home button and a plastic insert for that, too. Okay, there, come back, and the first thing I read is Paul check PayPal. <laughs> okay, all right. I will quickly just go check PayPal. Ah, found what I was after. Okay, I found what I was looking for, so I'll be right back. Now, Paul, that's uh, confirmed. I just saw that come through. Thank you very much. I'm uh, <laughs> a little worried at times with the way these things go. Sometimes I might get a bit um, 
I could just say, uh, I'm not exactly sure what I'm trying to say. Uh, must not get into the behavior of anticipating such things as a regular thing. Alright. There we go. Now if you're wondering what it was I was looking for, it's these little... Come on. Come on. Come on. Little rubber rings. Chris Long bought sandwiches. <laughs> Let's see. Paul has a stroke. What? What am I stroking, Krajo? I don't think I'm stroking anything. <laughs> oh, wait, no, I understand what you're saying now. I just reassembled the context. <laughs> Ow. Well, I do apologise that uh, all I seem to be doing lately are all these rather routine, everyday items. Though it does give you a moderately realistic view of what goes on most days around most workshops. So as much as I want it to be fun and exciting, it doesn't often happen that way. Uh, one thing um, you've got to watch with these iPhone plastic replacement buttons is they often do not come with a little metal insert that goes on the back here. And without that little metal insert, you will not have any luck pressing the button down. So I'll have to find a spare somewhere and steal it from there. Now the reason why... Have I got this right way around? Yep. The reason why I'm still using a new one of these is because, well, I don't want the person to think that I'm using shonky second-hand stuff on their phone. Since they are paying the proper price for the job. And I'm not the cheapest guy around. Intentionally. I had someone today sort of bickering a little bit over... I shouldn't say bickering, maybe haggling is a better word. Over pricing of an iPhone 6 replacement. Uh, sort of drove me a little bit insane too because I said to him, well, what do you... you know, what model you got, what colour. And I don't know if anyone else rec found this, but when you ask a person what colour the front of their screen is, very few people seem to be able to tell me. So like if I say, have you got a black or white front glass? I get all different answers, like it's an iPhone 6 silver. Um, let's see, different colours. Or is that on or off? Yeah, I can understand some of the ambiguities and all that. So to resolve a lot of that, sort of annoyance, I now just simply ask them, what colour is your home button? Because everything else, well, uh, anything else just seems to confuse them for some reason. I'm not sure why. So I don't know. Has anyone else experienced that? That's... Mike says, but it brings us together all uh, all together for a meetup. Yeah, I guess so. You could call this sort of like the the uh, water cooler, the Australian water cooler for the rest of the world. I am going to be putting the metal insert in there. I just need to set that one in first. So, going to order my PC3000 flash recovery at the end of the week. Oh, that will be interesting. So you just get in the one for the solid state drive flash recoveries. I think that's a pretty sensible move. Um, I mean, I would like to... This Google money thing on the chat, I always get a call from the bank. <laughs> what are they... F well, this is not uh, Twitch chat. Okay, okay I've got to be careful here. This is a very new blade on this X-Acto knife. And I'm not really a fan of the emergency department anymore at the hospital. I've had more than my fair share of visits as a youngster. 
and I kind of enjoy the fact that I haven't been there for a long time. I think the last time I was there was about 12, 13 years ago now. And that was at a time, funnily enough, a unrealized panic attack. And I thought I was having some sort of a coronary. Anyway, learnt different about that since. I need some super glue. Hey, Stephen Remington. Let's see. I'm just scrolling back to see what I missed. Patrick Gill. I'm going to use that next time. Uh, what are you going to use next time, Patrick? Sorry. Paul's. I have two iPhones. Uh, S256 Megs black and white one for business. Ah, okay, yeah, that's actually a good idea. I should try that with myself. Because I, at the moment, I just block everybody on my phone because of my hearing issues. So, when I ask what colour people's phones are, they tell me the colour of their house phone. <laughs> that's no good. Uh, ah, Shane, Chris, your phone's going to die. Not good. Yeah, for SD cards and flash memory. Ah, welcome back, Chris. Uh, Chris, I hope you don't run into the USB monoliths too soon. They are an absolute pain in the posterior to do. But uh, you more than likely will get hit with one sooner or later. Oh, I've got to be careful with this stuff. It gives me flu-like symptoms if I get too much of a whiff of it. Okay. Nicely set in. That's a, I've done memory upgrades, just not cost effective for most people. Yeah, I agree. And like what Lewis says, you carry such a yeah, big funny, uh, liability risk on that in terms of yeah, just your own money, time. Things like that I don't mind doing for a friend or someone who's understands, I mean legitimately understands the risk factors. Yeah, if you're just doing it for an experiment, that's great. But on a commercial sense, hell no. I had two uh, scares today with jobs. Uh, you may recall in the past I've spoken about how I retain data for two weeks or so, maybe sometimes four, before discarding it. I had a job from April and on the invoice of this job, it was a data transfer job, I said in big letters and highlighted and all that, please verify that all the data that you require has been successfully transferred um, because this data will be scrubbed from the systems here after two weeks. So this is back in April. I get a message today. I've just plugged in my drive and I'm looking for my accounting book working data for the tax financial year. I can't find it anywhere. Did you transfer it? And I was like, you have got to be kidding me. I said, what is the point of any of this? Uh, and you get this sort of situation happening. Fortunately as it was, I had in this particular case, for whatever reason, a bit of luck I guess, um, I had transferred their data to an external drive rather than my internal one because my internal one was full. And lo and behold, I still had that drive floating around and I had actually put a sticker on the drive, this is what I do now. If it's an external drive, I'll put a sticker on it to say whose data's on there and every time a different person's data is added on there because I can fit multiples on there. I add another sticker. So there it was and it was sitting in my recovery machine waiting to be scrubbed. So they really got off lightly that time. Found all their data, gave it back to them 
and I told them to bring around an external drive and I transferred everything onto that as well. And I said to them, I said, you're really lucky. And so, yeah, that was this far away from being scrubbed. Anyway, more than likely it'll probably still happen. But then I got a second person today and would you believe it, it's the same thing. And I thought, you're going to be kidding me. So, and fortunately, I did still have their data as well. It was just like, what's going on with these people? You, you, you tell them, they're like, our data's valuable, we need our data. You give it to them and they're like, yeah, thanks. Haven't checked it for six months. We assume it's all there. I said, yeah, well, that's the problem. They assume it's all there. Because you don't really have a way of verifying that you have successfully transferred everything that they are looking for. Uh, in this case, the data that they were after was being stored outside of their user folder. And that's why it wasn't on the initial transfer, but it was still on the clone drive. So thank God for that. Okay, Whitehox 11. That's when you bring out the cattle prod. Yep, yep, around here that would be quite appropriate, funnily enough. There's plenty of those cattle prods to be bought. I've got a customer coming in tomorrow who's going to be going off to the sale yards, cattle sale yards. And uh, they're starting late, they said. They're going to be there at 8.30, so can they, since they're late, can they drop their computer off for me to have a look at while they're there? I'm thinking 8.30. I'm not even out of bed until about 10. But uh, in this case, with these type of consumers, I do... What I do is I tell them, just drop the equipment off on the table I have outside, on the patio. The security camera watches you. Hit the doorbell. And then run. And the reason why they need to run is because I'll be asleep. And then my wife will wake me up and say, the doorbell... And then I stagger out, and I'm not always in the best of visual state when I stagger out, so it's better if customers run so they don't see me in such a state. So, And then I'll bring that equipment inside, tag it, and then go to bed, <laughs> go back to bed for a little bit longer. The only trouble is if I'm up too long, or take too long, the cats get all excited, because they think, hey, the parents are up. Let's go outside and frolic. And I'm like, no thanks. Just stay inside. <laughs> uh, see. Oh, I'm still grabbing the wrong mouse. What's the point of me having a different mouse and keyboard? Flashing lights and fireworks and things still get ignored. Yes, exactly. Oh. Did you make him sweat for a while before you told him? Yes, I did make this person sweat for a bit. Um, because, to be fair, I actually didn't know whether that data was intact or not. I had a NTFS clone image, which is substantially smaller in this case. It was a, from a one terabyte drive, all in one Lenovo machine. And the image file I had there was only like 109 megabyte, uh, gigabytes. And I thought, ooh, this is a bit weird. And then I realized that it was a um, NTFS clone image which all that does really is it copies the data and nothing else it doesn't bother copying the blank space so if i've got room my preference is still to have an actual proper dd rescue image complete with blank space data um, but if i'm a little bit squeezed and it's not for an actual drive migration then i will use the ntfs rescue so I'm just transferring the pads here. I do not like installing screens without their compression pads, even though it seems to be a very popular thing to leave off. Oh, sorry, I was... Paul Dyer, one of the local guys, I fronted the money... F fronted him the money. He is smart. Showed him how to read the diagrams and using a scope. Okay, you're doing a fair bit of this sort of um, contribution work, and f is it philanthropologist? Uh, yeah. Certainly well appreciated, I will tell you that much, Paul. I think you've 
definitely launching a lot of people on their way to successful careers and certainly hope that we see a lot of contributions come back. Chris Long, my girlfriend said you sound like the guy from IT crowd that is locked in the ser Ah, Richmond! Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, yes, we all love Richmond. Okay, most of us love Richmond. <laughs> It's just a shame he wasn't in the show for much because he had his own stuff to deal with. The um, the Mighty Bush, B O S C H. My wife and I frequently talk to each other in quotes from IT Crowd. It's a common language with us. I am glad that she said Richmond as opposed to Moss or Roy or worse still Jen. Uh, the other possible match I suppose could have been Douglas. He's a little bit uh, a little bit much to take at times. <laughs> yeah, it's a good show, just a shame it didn't run for long but that seems to be a fairly common thing with good shows. Making no mentions of Firefly. Alright, let's see if this thing even works. <sighs> Sounds like that's the second data recovery. Patrick, you're not far wrong on that. Um, while I didn't charge the person outright on this particular job, they mostly because they are a regular, but that will be f somewhat factored into the next job they bring in. Let's see how we go. Well, I've got a boot going on here, so I'm happy. If I was going to do repair, if I was going to do repairs, it would be a must for me. I told him how to read them. Finally, got one. But wow! Oh man, YouTube chat just did that big jump on me. Do you like Jess? I give you USB stick and charge twice the price of the stick. Yeah. Anyone plays with the solder and iron? Seen Smart Pro 32. Never heard of that one. Same. Pads are there for a reason. Right, the compression pads, yep. Plus it looks awful. Looks like crap without them, I agree. Now, I've, I've had plenty of phones come in where they've popped out of the the um, pads, oh, sorry, popped out of their sockets because of the lack of pads. I know on the iPhone 4 and 4S it was a particularly profitable little job for me. So if it didn't recover from the home and lock combo, then I knew the next second, or well, the next option was going to be they just jumped off their, um, off their FPC sockets. So I quite enjoyed doing that. Bush did not, oh my god, uh, do we have to, <laughs> why do people have to bring that in? <laughs> well, that felt funny when that went in. Right. Well, that works, good, let's see, ringer, no, uh, I don't have a passcode for this. And that needs passcode. Well, yeah, well, that looks like it's good. Great. I'm happy. This is a regular repeat customer. Um, one of my first customers, funnily enough, from this town. I think the first thing they gave me was a Dell 17, Dell Studio 17-inch laptop that needed a new screen. And they've continued to give me quite a lot of work, even when it's been a bit cheaper for them to go elsewhere. They are nice enough to still bring it through me. So I can only hope that that means I'm doing a reasonable job with their stuff. Uh, let's see.
Or is tricky with data recovery since the file names can be software assigned now. Yeah. Sequential file names, people do not always know the names of their files. Yeah, and I find, particularly with things that for, pardon me, uh, earlier software, say like from XP era and whatnot, they didn't always put stuff into like the user folder, they just sort of splattered it everywhere they want. So, which is why in this case, as with most cases, even if I'm only copying the user folder across, I will tend to still make a clone of the entire drive. It was just very fortunate of them that I happened to have it on an external terabyte or so drive. I've got, in each of my recovery machines, I keep an 8 terabyte drive, but that does fill up sometimes when you just have a large run of recovery jobs. Uh, so I do keep a few spare 1 and 2 terabytes lying around that I can then um, use as backups. The other time where it's useful is if you've got one of these new laptops that you have to completely disassemble to get to the drive and if the drive only has um, well for one if the person is not even going to bother repairing the machine they just want the data off then you know, it's useful for that you just plug it into USB and recover that way. The other one is if you just want to take an image of the drive you don't want to have to take the whole drive out because you're not sure what the customer is going to yet decide so it's handy to have the external drives on USB. Paul was cleaning up one of my sleeves and found a bunch of old pics from iPhone. Days. Yeah, I nearly said that completely wrong then, but thank you. <laughs> You're talking about the guitar pics? Yeah. Chris Long and Paul, look it up. Tips are $15 a piece. Oh, right, for the soldering iron, right, yes. And yes, you can... Paul, you should be able to post links. Or you probably have, since I haven't... Yep, yeah, there you go. We did a Dell Studio the other day for their time. They were very advanced. They were very advanced, very heavy. Um, but yeah, they were nice machines. I've got... I've got three carcasses in my workshop room. I've also got a pair of those uh, Toshiba Cosimos, I think they were, the whopping great big 17-inch things. Yeah. I don't know what's happened to them. At one point I was considering repairing them, but now it's sort of like, eh, probably the CCFLs are dying in them anyway. Hey, Amy. Chief and swapping a hidden tips to the hacker. I'm going to have to have a look at this now. Amy, that power supply we cleaned up the other night from the shuttle system, that uh, it died again. As soon as I put it under about a 50 watt load, it just pff, dropped out. So, no big issue. It's a dead end machine anyway. That is a really different soldering iron. Scene Smart Pro 32 soldering iron. Is it like battery powered or something? Oh, I'm going to have a look at the. Uh, oh, neat. <laughs> Working off a laptop light switch pack. I see the concept of their tips is very much the same as the hacker in the sense of it's just hot swappable. Mm. Yeah, they want the data for free. Yeah, time to go jump on that one, Chris. Yeah, people do have a funny concept of what they should or shouldn't pay for when it comes to these jobs. Uh, I was discussing with someone the other night. Oh, actually, no, I think I mentioned it here the other night too. About the ethics behind deliberately disabling phones that you've done for data recovery so that people don't get the perception that the phone is actually still repairable with just a couple more dollars or another couple of minutes of work. So it's one of those ethical dilemmas because you know that you're going to get someone who thinks that it should be done for ten dollars extra or whatever and you know it's going to be a nightmare and chances are when it dies six months later they're going to blame you still. Yeah, the data becomes less valuable once the price is mentioned. Damn right. 
Hi hi two one seven. The IRS just called me and there's an arrest warrant for me. I need to call them back before any. Oh no! I wonder if that's a number that's not normally listed on their site. <laughs> so Paul, you're going to get one of these um, Saint Smart irons and give it a whirl. The biggest, the first thing that catches me about that particular iron is the length of the tip. Um, I know some people like to have that sort of extension. I personally like to be as close to the board as I can with my pincer control. So I think a lot of it could come down to personal preference. But then again, you, know, you never know. It's just I figure with that sort of distance, your well, my handshakes would probably translate to wiping out 0402s with ease. There's a German guy that reviewed that soldering iron. He calls it the Weller Killer. Okay. Someone was helping a friend who apparently lost their phone but never had the Find My iPhone enabled on the device. Said contact telco change a password, including the Apple account. Yeah, I hear stories like that. I don't know whether they're just, um, what could you say, uh, <sighs> I can't think of the term now. Or oh, myths sort of thing. I mean, I'd love it if that was true. But uh, pretty much every single time I've told a person to approach Apple to try and get their passcode sorted out, they almost always end up wiping it anyway. But it'd be nice if it could be done. And I'm sure technically it possibly can be done. Yeah. Paying pennies for. <laughs> okay, here's a here is a good story. In the islands, we have three TV system: UK, French, and US. So, a buddy bought his TV, so I can add them on sound only black and white TV days. So, it did all three sound? So you so you could well they're broadcasting different audio channels with the same picture or. Maybe I'm not reading that right. All right, yeah, <coughs> quadcopter stuff. Yeah. I love the quadcopters. Um, I think there's some real lunatics out there with any department. Like I love these designs. Though they're saying the new modern transport system, whatever, and they always have the blades. Um, below the main mass and um, it's just like you guys just sort of failed aerodynamics right on the first point there you know, the, that's an inherently unstable system not to mention quite dangerous um, but, and yet they managed to get all the venture capital uh, funding so that's one thing I found that's a little bit frustrating in life is most of the time it's those who can talk a good story that will you know, pick up all the millions and millions of dollars for these sort of projects, whereas the ones with the actual genuine knowledge who perhaps could do it right tend to get overlooked because they don't have that, um, they don't have the social finesse, as it were, to be able to get away with doing venture capital um, job uh, attraction. And usually if they hire someone to do the venture capital um work most of the money goes astray somewhere or another so yeah it's a bit it's a, one of those life things so i know i've never been a real big fan of it trying to raise venture capital and i just sort of prefer to go at it myself best i can and if it turns into a success i'll see who approaches and then try to sell off to the highest bidder Do you have an Amazon affiliate system? Uh, Englishman in Brazil? Yes, I do. A lot of the links in for the products down below are Amazon affiliates. So if you click on them, you will see my 
affiliate handle in there which is PL Daniels 20 uh, there's also other ones which aren't there's certain products obviously that aren't available through Amazon um, obviously software things what like that uh, but yeah there's there's some of them in there which are Amazon affiliates so if you do buy I don't know a Lamborghini Diablo or something through Amazon then I'll get a portion System four and a half, five and a half, six and a half megahertz. I did it for free. He called. Uh, does not sound so. Sort of, if you want to spend 150, yeah, yeah, that's it. You know, free has its limitations. If you're gonna do a complete, proper job, then yeah, pay more money. I'll be back, and if not, this is goodbye for now. All right. Well, I'm thinking I'm close to finishing up because I've done this. The knock is done. And what are we doing for time? It's only 12.30 here. But I probably should get an early night's sleep. I didn't really get much sleep last night. Um, actually, a few of you will know I ran a stream at about 2.30 in the morning. So it was a bit ludicrous. You bought it, put it on the bench, injected sound at each one of the three systems. Sound was great, so I told him I did. <laughs> he gave it 100. <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh, sometimes, it, sometimes you have to demonstrate it that kind of way to convince them. Hey, Cormac. Yeah, sorry, Cormac. I'm close enough. I'm afraid. Just a short one tonight. There was only two tasks here. Um, the knuck was already mostly done. In spite of the fact that this knuck took me most of the day to get sorted out. A lot of it was me tripping over my junk in this workshop, which is why I'm going to be getting new benches, new shelves, everything in preparation for when the microscope arrives, which won't be for another month. That's okay. I need time to sort this out, uh, but the month will go quick enough, and before I know it, it will be here, and we'll actually get some more interesting streams happening. So, Gordon said, now it worked, great, did nothing. Okay, I'm out of here. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Paul. And I will see you guys next time. Um, I do try every day to try and find something to say for the evening for everybody. Doesn't always work out. But it's the luck of the draw. And yeah, as usual, this is pretty much what we do most days as a general tech workshop. Yeah, try to spice it up. You never know. Tomorrow might be luckier. Until then, take care.